morning. Yeah, take your Bibles and turn to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Another beautiful day that God's given Amen. us. Amen. Another time to be in this house. And we hope you've already prayed. Bless him, Lord. Well, we'd ask him to send you prayers today. Mm -hmm. If you find your place, Hebrews chapter 10. Start reading at uh, verse 36. Hebrews chapter 10, we're in verse 36. The scripture says, For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, Amen. but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Mm -hmm. We ask you if you would to bow your heads. Father, again, we thank you for another day. We thank you yes. once again for the time to be in your house, yes. for your precious word. And uh, again, Father, let the message go out uh, over our inability, Father, that those that have a need, that have a burden, Father, those that need to encourage this morning, Father, that mm -hmm. would accomplish what it would. Again, guide us with what needs said. We thank you, we praise you, and we ask these things in Christ's name. And amen. 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 Bless him. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Right, right. Displeasing God. Yeah. Displeasing God. And uh, some are probably thinking, well, this is going to be the shortest message ever, right? <laughs> Sin, right? That, that just sums it up, Doug. We could have yeah. just churched from home today like we work from home, like we school from home. It, it's, uh, it's that simple. Well, let's get into it a little more than that. I right. know it's going to disappoint Mary Kay, but uh, <laughs> that's all right. She'll get over it, just like Papa says. Okay? But displeasing God, displeasing God. There are those that uh, maybe would look and say, well, you know, that that relates to the Israelites, mm -hmm. right? Because because they screwed up is why we have the chance, Bill, to be mm -hmm. saved. But it's more than that, folks. Yes, that's right. What applied for them still applies for us. That's right. Okay, that's right. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, mm -hmm. around verse 5, it says, But God was not pleased with many of them, mm -hmm. and that many of them were overthrown in the wilderness. Yes, yes. He wasn't pleased. He said that, uh, he goes on and says that uh, it, it was written that they uh, sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Right, right. That uh, let us not commit fornication as some of them committed, for in one day there, there fell three and 20,000. Right. Folks, can you imagine if that applied today? Fornication, sexual immorality, mm -hmm. Bill. Right. Said 23,000 died right. Rick, in one day. The nursing, nursing homes, the funeral homes yeah. <laughs> couldn't contain all fornication mm -hmm. that's committed today. Mm -hmm. Right. Folks, right. but the rules still apply. Mm -hmm. What was wrong then, right. still wrong today. Right. He said, let us not tempt Christ mm -hmm. as some of them tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Mm -hmm. Right? You recall that, yes. that the, the snakes came and yep. destroyed some of them? Let us not murmur. Oh, man. As some of them murmured yeah. and were destroyed of the destroyer. Yep. But he goes on and says, All these were written for our examples and our admonition. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that, well, they was wrong and you all don't have to worry about this. Mm -hmm. Folks, everything in this book is written for your benefit. That's right. Amen. From Genesis to Revelation, everything in here is for your example, for your benefit. For your admonition. And displeasing God. Folks, listen. Doug displeases God. You displease That's God. Right. I hate to break that to That's you. That's right. That's right. Bless him all. We all displease God. Folks, even David, a man after God's own yes. heart. Yes. Second Samuel 11, the last verse 
in that chapter, 27, I think it is, talking about after that uh, he had uh, committed adultery, after he had had your eye killed, and then covered it up, and then everything seemed like it was fine, Harley. Mm -hmm. But the last sentence in that, that chapter says, but the thing that David had done displeased mm -hmm. the Lord. Right, right. Listen, folks, when we commit sin, it displeases the Lord. Right. When we fail to do what we're supposed to do, that's right. it displeases the Lord. Mm -hmm. Displeasing God. What displeases God? When we fail to walk with him. That's right. When we fail to walk with him. In that 30th verse, now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Yeah. Folks, God wants you to walk with him. Yes. He wants you to walk with him. He wants to have a daily interaction with you. You go on into the chapter 11 and you see in that fifth verse, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God translated. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Amen. You know how Enoch pleased God? You go back and study uh, Genesis 6, I believe. It says that he walked with God. Yes, yes. Folks, you want to know how you can please God? Walk with God. Amen. <laughs> John uh, 6, 66, right? said uh, that after Christ had been talking to some of them, it said that uh, from this time, many of his disciples began to, to turn away and walk no longer with him. That's right. And said that he turned to the 12 and said, will ye also yeah. leave? Mm -hmm. And said that Simon Peter uh, said, uh, Lord, to whom shall we go? Right. Thou hast the words of eternal life. Amen. Stand and up. we believe and are sure. Yes. That thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter said, listen, where can we go? Who can we walk with? Enoch walked with God. The disciples walked with God. Folks, we should walk with God. Amen. When we don't walk with God, it displeases him. Yeah. Amos 3.3, 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together except they be agreed? You know why people don't want to walk with God? They don't want to follow his rules. Right, right. It's you true. can't walk with somebody that you're in disagreement with. And folks, that's the problem is that we compromise. Yes, we do. That's right. We'll do whatever to, to, to get along with friends, with family, with loved ones. Mm -hmm. But we don't extend God the same courtesy. Mm -hmm. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Folks, you've got to be in agreement with God to walk with him. Amen. And when you're not, he's displeased. Right. He's displeased over worthless offerings. He's displeased over worthless offerings. In Genesis chapter 4, and we mentioned this a couple weeks back, right? Cain and Abel said they both brought an offering unto God. That Abel had brought a, the firstling of his flock, and Cain had brought the, the fruits of his, of his uh, garden or whatever. It said that God had respect unto Abel and his offering, but to Cain, he had not respect to his right, offering. Right. So Cain, right, mm -hmm. gets upset, goes up the pucker tree. Yeah. You all have a pucker tree at the house, right? <laughs> well, or a whole garden, whole garden of pucker trees, whole orchard. Rick, I think there's a lot of people that got an orchard full of pucker trees. <laughs> but right, Cain gets mad, and the Lord says, why are thou wroth? Why are you mad? Why is thy countenance fallen? If thou do well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou do no, doest not well, then sin lieth at the door. That's right. Listen, what Cain brought was a worthless offering. Well, this will do. This is this, this is good enough, folks. Listen, Doug's best isn't good enough. Your best isn't good enough. You know what was good enough? The cross. Yes. And that was the only thing that was good enough. Amen. Without the shame of blood, there is no remission of sin. Folks, Amen. without the blood of Christ, you can't be saved. Right. That's right. That's not being judgmental. That's not being exclusion. Nope. Without the blood of Christ, without his death on the cross, folks, we couldn't be saved. That's right. He's tired. He, he's not pleased with worthless offerings. Folks, when, when people just come to church just because it's Sunday... Just because it's time, just because, well, yeah, that, that's what we do. Folks, that's a worthless offering. What Abel offered was he knew what God wanted. Folks, when we come to church, we should offer what God wants. Right. 
What does he want? All this. Yes. Not part of it. Not what you think you can spare. Mm -hmm. He wants all of our heart. And folks, he's not pleased with half-hearted offerings. He's not pleased with worthless offerings. Right, right. Bless him, Lord. But there's a lot of people offering worthless offerings today. Yeah. And Bill, I'm not even going to get into what we what we put in the plate, okay? We've already made people mad this morning. But he ain't pleased with that either. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Folks, he's not pleased with disobedience. Mm -hmm. That's right. He's not pleased with disobedience. If you're a parent, you expect your children to obey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're a boss or you're a supervisor, you expect your employees to obey. Folks, why, Junior, why does God not get that same right? True. Why shouldn't the Father expect us to obey? Right. That's right. But we act like we don't have to obey God. Mm -hmm. Listen, folks, obedience isn't optional. That's right. That's right. Obedience isn't optional. And there's a lot of children that have grown up and wrecked their lives because you know what? They looked at Harlan and they said, well, obedience is just optional. Mm -hmm. I don't want to listen to what mom or dad says. Yeah. There's a lot of employees that have lost their job because yeah. they looked at it the same way. Well, you know what? Obedience, uh, I don't have to do what the boss says. Mm -hmm. Folks, there's a reason that mom and dad set rules. Mm -hmm. There's a reason that your employer sets rules. Mm -hmm. You may not like it. You may not agree with it. But in most cases, it's for your benefit. That's right. It's to keep you safe. That's right. It's so that others don't get hurt and so that you don't get hurt. Folks, it's the same way. This book is full of rules. Yes. So that you don't get hurt. Right. So that you don't hurt others. Right. But obedience isn't optional. First Samuel 15, right, 22. Again, you look at Saul with the Amalekites. He said, well, I'll spare the king. I'll spare all this cattle and stuff. And Samuel comes back and he says, listen. Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Amen. And to hearken than the fat of rams. Right. Listen, folks, you can set up a uh, foundation. You can donate millions and billions of dollars. And there are people that have done that. That's right. And Bill, we're not making any judgments. I don't no. know whether Bill Gates is saved. Right. I don't know whether all these other people are saved. That's I'll right. just be frankly and honest. I have my doubts about most of them. Right. Okay. But folks, you can do all this. Mm -hmm. But that's not what God wants. He wants obedience. Folks, you can't buy your way into heaven. No. You can't pay for past sins. No. You can't make up for what's been done. Listen, whatever was done yesterday, guess what? It's in the books and it's final. Mm -hmm. Sandy, I can't go back and change it. We can't go back and change it. It's done. Yes, that's right. You can't change history. Mm -hmm. No. But God can forgive it. Amen. And Amen. he's the only one that can forgive it. That's right. It. But the Lord has no pleasure in disobedience. Folks, it's hypocritical for me as a father... To expect my children to do everything that I say mm -hmm. and not give my heavenly father the same courtesy. Right, right. That's right. Amen or else. Amen. Bless him all. Obedience is not optional. And it displeases the Lord. It displeases the Lord. He's displeased with worthless promises. He's displeased with worthless promises. Uh, Ecclesiastes 5, 4, I believe. It says, When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. Mm -hmm. For God hath no pleasure in fools. Right. That's right. You go back and read that. For God hath no pleasure in, in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. For it is better that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Mm-hmm. Worthless promises. When I was in school growing up, there used to be a song called Promises, Promises. And uh, part of the lyrics to it, uh, Promises, Promises, that I knew you'd never keep. <laughs> okay? 
Folks, that's the way with God. There are all kinds of people that make promises, Rick, with no intention of keeping them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. God's not pleased with that. Mm -hmm. Are you pleased when someone lies to you? Listen, folks, I hate liars. Mm -hmm. I hate people that are two-faced. I'd rather, Junior, if you're going to be a jerk to me, just be a jerk to me. But don't say one thing and then act another. Don't make promises that you have no intention of fulfilling. Folks, God's the same way. He doesn't want promises that you're not going to fulfill. And folks, so many Christians make promises with no intention of fulfilling. So many people make promises to God that, uh, you know, I, I'm going to be better this year. Folks, we're almost a month through. How many people have took their New Year's resolutions and just threw them aside? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm going to get in shape this year. Oh, I'm going to be better this year. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Well, you're 24 days in. What have you done? Yeah. That's all right. Worthless promises, folks, until you actually do something. Folks, God doesn't want promises from us that you're not going to fulfill. Mm -hmm. You remember Peter? Right? He said, uh, even if everybody else forsakes you, Lord, said, I won't. I'll be there till the bitter end. And he looked at him and said, Peter, before the night's over, you'll deny me thrice mm -hmm. before the cock crows. Now, if Peter had good intentions, folks, I'm not saying you don't have good intentions. But that's all they are until you actually do something about it. That's right. Until we actually uh, come through and start living the way that we say, the Lord, I'm going to straighten up. Mm -hmm. Worthless promises. And you remember when the cock crew, it said that they was taking Christ out through the courtyard and they just looked at Peter. That's right. Mm -hmm. so he didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. What did they have to say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You told me you'd do this. And now look, folks, worthless promises displease the Lord. Right. Worthless promises displease the Lord. Folks, a lack of faith displeases the Lord. Mm -hmm. A lack of faith displeases the Lord. He, Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible. Right. That's right. You might want to highlight that in your Bibles. Yeah. But without faith, it is impossible mm -hmm. to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Right. The first uh, verse of chapter 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Amen. Listen, folks, my parents and grandparents, your parents and grandparents, all these people, Sandy, that we grew up with and looked up to, listen, the, they didn't get to heaven because... We thought they were good people. Mm -hmm. But because they had faith. Mm -hmm. Folks, you're not going to get to heaven because somebody thinks you're a good person. Mm -hmm. You're going to get to heaven because of faith. That's right. That's right. It, verse 38, now the just shall live by faith. Amen. Folks, when we don't have faith, God's displeased. Right, right. You remember when he was in the boat in the storm? Mm -hmm. And after he calmed the wind and stuff, he said, where's your faith? Mm -hmm. When the Israelites had come to the land, to the edge of Canaan and only Joshua and Caleb said, you know what, let's go. Yeah. Where was the faith? Right. Folks, where is faith today? Right. Folks, if you think that God is pleased with faith today in the church, and I'm not talking about Pinchery Edge, I'm not talking about any other church, I am talking about the church. Mm -hmm. Folks, God is not pleased mm -hmm. with the faith that's shown today, Sandy. Mm -hmm. I think that just like in the boat, he looks and says, where is your all's faith? People act like that their, their faith is only good, Bill. And I think you test on this when, yeah. when hard times are here or when times are good. Yeah. And other than that, if it's just a normal day, well, I don't need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Folks, God isn't pleased with that. No, no. Bless him more. He's not pleased with that. Mm -hmm. He's not pleased with indifference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. He's not pleased with indifference. And folks, if there is ever a description of the state of the church today, it's indifference. Yes. It's indifference. Revelation 3, it said to the church at Laodicea, he said, I know thou works that thou art neither cold nor hot. Mm -hmm. I would that thou wert cold or hot. Right. 
So God, he's kind of like Doug, Rick. How about that? <laughs> if you want to be a jerk to me, be a jerk to me. Yeah. Or love me, whichever. Yeah. But don't try and straddle the fence. Mm -hmm. He said, but because thou art lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Right. In other words, you make me sick. Because you won't take one side or another. Folks, God is not pleased with indifference. Mm -hmm. The church has become indifferent. Yeah, that's true. People have become indifferent. Well, if I make it, I make it. Mm -hmm. If I don't, I don't. Mike, if we felt that way about our jobs, we wouldn't have one. Yeah, that's right. Right? That's right. That's <laughs> right. If we felt that way about our friends and loved ones, Jessica, we wouldn't have them for very long. Mm -hmm. What use would you have for somebody that only comes around when they feel like it? But folks, that is the attitude of the church today. And again, listen to what I'm saying. The attitude of the church. Listen, folks, the heathen have no interest in that. Mm -hmm. But it's sad when the church has no interest. Right. It's sad when the church doesn't care. Mm -hmm. That displeases God. Right. He's displeased when we are more concerned with fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Right. Right. He's he's displeased. He's not happy about that. Romans chapter eight, around verse six, somewhere around there. It says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, and they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. Right. But to be spiritually minded mm -hmm. is life and peace. For the carnal mind is enmity against God. Folks, listen to what I just said. Mm -hmm. To be carnally minded is to be an enemy of God. Right. For the carnal mind is enemy against God. Mm -hmm. For it cannot be subject unto the laws of God. Neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Right. That's right. Romans 8 8. Might be one of those that you want to highlight. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Listen, folks, if I come to church every Sunday, but I'm running around on my wife, mm -hmm. God's not pleased. Mm -hmm. right, right. If you're coming to church every Sunday and then stop on the way home to buy lottery tickets. Mm -hmm. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Amen or out. <laughs> God is not pleased. Folks, if you come to church and take Holy Communion with the pure grape juice and then go home and pop open a beer, God is not pleased. Bless you, Lord. Bless you. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. Folks, you look through the Bible, no one that has ever fulfilled the lust of the flesh has, has pleased God. Right, that's right. No one. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. Folks, there are a lot of people fulfilling the lust of the flesh today. And it can't work. No man can serve two masters. Right. So you can't come to church on Sunday and then spend the rest of the week mm -hmm. partying with the devil. Mm -hmm. That's right. It doesn't work. No man can serve two masters. Mm -hmm. For else he will hold to the one and despise the other, or he love the one and hate right, the other. Right. Listen, folks, God's a jealous God. He's not going to share. That's right. He's not pleased when we care more about fulfilling the lust of the flesh than we do about fulfilling his word. Displeasing God. Displeasing God. You know what displeases God more than anything? When people choose to perish. That's what displeases God more than anything. When people choose to perish. Mm -hmm. Second Peter 3, 9, I believe. It said, For God is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, 1 Timothy 2, 4, 2, 5, somewhere like that. It says, for he would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. Ezekiel, 1832. 
For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn ye yourselves and live. Folks, God has no pleasure in all these cemeteries full of people that's going to a place, Sandy, that was never made for. If you die lost, you go to a hell that was never made for you. That's right. The Bible plainly That's right. declares, Bill, yeah. that it was made for the devil and his angels. That's right. And for those that die and go to hell, you go there as an intruder. Right. That's right. That's right. And if you think that God's pleased at that, he's not. It breaks his heart. Sure. Sure. Listen, when he's destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, and folks, there's probably a lot of cities today, Danny, that he could do the same. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That are just as wicked, just as evil. Mm -hmm. But he didn't want to do that. When Abraham asked him, if there's 50, would you spare it? Yeah. yeah. 45, yeah. 40, yeah. 30, yeah. 20, yeah. 10, yeah. Mm -hmm. How much does he not want people to die? He gave his only begotten son. Amen. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. John 5, 39 says, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and these are they that testify of me and you will not come unto me that you might have life. Right. You know what displeases God more than anything? That he's thrown a life preserver out to us, Sandy, mm -hmm. and people just let it float by. That's right. I'll just tread water. I'll tread water. Yeah. Jonathan knows this. He's a good swimmer. He teaches people to swim. But even the best swimmer, and Jonathan will verify this, at some point they can't tread water anymore. Mm -hmm. At some point you're going to sink. Mm -hmm. At some point you're going to drown. And isn't that sad? Wouldn't it be sad if you had a life preserver, Rick, that you could grab hold of yeah. and live? Mm -hmm. Folks, Christ is that life preserver. All you got to do is grab hold of him and, right. and you'll, you'll live. Amen. But so many just... I'll just tread water. Folks, you're getting ready to drown. Yeah. Without Christ, you are getting ready to drown. Displeasing God. Folks, we should strive to please God. We should strive to please God. You know why? Proverbs 16, 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Mm -hmm. That's right. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Yeah. Doug, I don't believe that. Well, maybe I'll talk to Joseph when you get to heaven. Yeah. His ways please the Lord, and you know what? Mm -hmm. Even his enemies were at peace with him. Right. Now, his own family wasn't, yeah, that's true. but his enemies mm -hmm. were at peace with him. Maybe you need to talk to Daniel mm -hmm. and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. Right, right. Folks, when their ways please the Lord, mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar mm -hmm. was at peace with them. Mm -hmm. Folks, Paul and Silas, mm -hmm. when they were in the prison, when they could have ran out and yeah. escaped, but because their ways pleased the Lord, Harley, that Philippian jailer come to know Christ. Amen. Folks, when a man's ways please the Lord, even his enemies he maketh mm -hmm. to be at peace with him. Mm -hmm. Folks, are we pleasing God today? Bless you, Lord. Do we even care if we're not pleasing him? Yeah. That's what I'm afraid of, folks. Yeah. I, I'm afraid that there are those that have got to the point, yeah. Lillian, that they don't even care if they're not pleasing him. That's right. That they don't even care. But if any man shall draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Mm -hmm. But we'll end with verse 39. Mm -hmm. We don't want to depress y'all. We'll give him some encouragement, right? But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Folks, I don't serve God to impress him. I don't serve God to impress you. Right, right. I serve him mm -hmm. because I believe to the saving of the Amen. soul. Amen.
Folks, when, when, when that's why we serve him, he'll be pleased. Mm -hmm. But folks, if we don't have faith, he says, I have no pleasure in that. Right. Displeasing God. Folks, are we displeasing God? Bless him, Lord. Danny, if you and Jacob can come and get us a number. Or Jacob, if you got your hands full, that's all right. I understand. Won't be long before you'll actually be seeing Daddy come up and understand what he's doing. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. But as they get a song, for everybody to stand. yesterday and wanted the church to remember uh, the family of Anna Corbin that passed away. And for those of you who don't know, Miss Paisel was out at the end of the road. Right? That's one of her daughters. So remember that family. Uh, Sammy's cousin Joe Kennedy, remember that family. Uh, folks, if you don't got anybody else to pray for, there's those that are losing loved ones every week. True. Mm -hmm. so if you don't have anything else to pray for, we can pray yeah. for that. Right. Anything else? If not Jonathan, dismiss us if you will. Lord, thank you for the service. Allow yes. us to come out here, hear the word, yes. the preaching, the teaching. Just be with us, watch out over us throughout the week. Yes. Lead us back to our next point in time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.